Hey internet, welcome back to my channel. I'm Shawnee and in this video I'm going to be sharing a bunch of awesome LGBTQ plus comics and graphic novels that you should totally check out, aka my queer graphic novel and comic collection. I'm so excited to share these recommendations with you guys. As a member of the LGBTQ plus community myself, I'm pretty much only interested in reading queer comics at the moment. Those kind of stories are just way more relatable for me personally. It's just what I prefer right now and I know there are many people out there who are just looking for these kind of stories and just looking for more recommendations so just think of me as like your internet BFF I'm gonna help you out one thing I should say is these recommendations are pretty queer women centric for the most part I mean there are like other characters within these stories that are guy characters and non-binary characters. The first recommendation I have for you is a comic. I am going to be showing a few graphic novels, um, two to be exact, but first one is a comic. It is called Heavy Vinyl Riot on the Radio. There are two or three volumes out of this. I have the first two. I've only read the first one so far, but I ordered volume two and I can't wait to jump into this because guys, I loved this comic. It's just a really fun fast-paced story. This is the main character. She starts a job at this record store that she thinks is just a record store, but it's so much more than that. And then there's also a really cute love story in there between these two. Like, she likes her, but she isn't sure if she likes her back. Let me just read the synopsis for you guys. Starry-eyed Chris has just started the dream job every outcast kid in town wants, working at Vinyl Destination. It's as rad as she imagined. Her boss is boss, her co-workers spend their time arguing over music, pushing against the patriarchy, and endlessly trying to form a band. But when Rosie Riot, the staff's favorite singer, mysteriously vanishes the night before her band's show, Chris discovers her co-workers are doing more than just sorting vinyl. Her local indie record store is also a front for a teen girl vigilante squad. Writer Carly Usden, director of Suicide Kale, and 2018 Russ Manning, Promising Newcomer Award-nominated artist Nina Vacueva, Lilith's World, with artist Irene Flores, Shoujo Fashion Manga Art School, deliver a rock and roll tale of intrigue and boundless friendship. The artwork is so adorable too, like extremely adorable. This is my ideal kind of artwork when I'm reading a comic. It's colorful, it's very realistically drawn, like a little bit cutesy but not too much. And there are some really cute scenes. This comic is very femme, very girl power, very female centric, which I love. Multiple queer characters, diverse characters, characters of different races and ethnicities, that's not always the case in comics, but I love when it is. Um, I really, really appreciate that because representation is so important, even in the comic world. The next recommendation I have for you is called Moonstruck. I have the first two volumes, but there are five volumes out. Guys, I love it when I fall in love with a comic series and then there are so many volumes. The sad thing about Heavy Vinyl and the other ones I'm going to show you is there are only like two or three volumes out. You almost don't want to finish it because you, then it's going to be over, right? So Moonstruck. I actually got this when I was in San Francisco. I was in the Mission District. I will try and pop the name of the store, the handle, in the video. I had a long train ride coming up because I was going to take the train to Seattle like that night. And so I wanted to get something to read and I happened to come across this one. Guys, this comic is so cozy. These two on the front cover have a really cute love story and the main characters work at this coffee shop so you already have like the coffee shop cozy vibes. I think it's like fall time or something. Let me read the synopsis for you guys. Monsters, romance, and magical hijinks. Oh my. <laughs> In the little college town of Blitton, fantasy creatures live cozy normal lives right alongside humans and werewolf barista Julie strives to be the most normal of all. But all heck breaks loose when she and her new girlfriend, Selena, go on a disastrous first date that ends with a magician casting a horrible spell on their friend, Chet. Now, it's up to the team of mythical pals to stop the illicit illusionist before it's too late. Collect issues one through five of the brand new all ages magical coffee laden adventure from Lumberjanes creator Grace Ellis and talented newcomer Shay Beagle featuring a story within the story with art from Kate Leth. Honestly, like even if I had all five volumes, I would still take it slow because when I find a comic I love, I don't want it to end. The artwork in this comic is so beautiful and adorable. This one is also full of diverse characters. There is a non-binary character. I got 
got volume one in San Francisco, but I ordered volume two on Amazon and I have not dived into volume two yet, so I still have this to look forward to. And then I should just order the rest. Next recommendation I have for you is a graphic novel. This is Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki. So I first came across this book when I was in the last bookstore, which is an independent bookstore in downtown Los Angeles. It's one of my favorite, not only bookstores, but just places to go in LA. During the current, you know, situation, they are open again, which is like a really great place we can go to escape. Anyway, before the current like whole world situation months and months ago, I was in there and I just saw this cover and I picked it up and I didn't even realize it was a queer story at first um, until I started reading it. I put it down, didn't end up buying it that day. Then months and months later during the quarantine, I was looking for stuff to read. I don't remember where I got it from but I ordered it online and then I finally finished it and uh, I was just so obsessed with this for a while because honestly I thought it was so good and it's just one of those graphic novels that you don't want to end. You really fall in love with the characters. You'll like it if you like like lighthearted teen drama romance stuff. So this is the synopsis. All friends Freddie Riley wants is for Laura Dean to stop breaking up with her. The day they got together was the best one of Freddie's life, but nothing's made sense since. Laura Dean is popular, funny, and so cute, but she can be really thoughtless, even mean. Their on-again, off-again relationship has Freddie's head spinning, and Freddie's friends can't understand why she keeps going back. When Freddie consults the services of a local mystic, the mysterious Seeker, she isn't thrilled with the advice she receives, but something's gotta give. Freddie's heart is breaking in slow motion, and she may be about to lose her very best friend as well as her last shred of self-respect. Fortunately for Freddie, there are new friends and the insight of advice columnist Anna Weiss to help her through being a teenager in love. Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell bring to life a sweet and spirited tale of young love that asks us to consider what happens when we ditch the toxic relationships we crave to embrace the healthy ones we need. The artwork is like a mix of black and white with a little bit of peach or pink in there, which is a very cool style. I cannot talk this graphic novel up enough. Please put it on your list, do yourself a favor and read this, check it out. Next recommendation, another graphic novel, Kiss Number 8 by Colleen A.F. Finnable and Ellen T. Crenshaw. So Kiss Number 8, I think I ordered Kiss Number 8 from Amazon um, and I was just looking for LGBTQ plus comics and I was just reading reviews and reading like looking for like the top ones and everything and this was on a bunch of lists so that made me want to check this out. The thing about this is for me personally I felt like it started off slow but then as I kept going uh, the story picked up and by the end it was definitely an emotional ride. The story was way 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 deeper than it like hinted at being like from even just the synopsis. Um, it is a coming out story. It has a lot um, to say about like being religious and being raised um, in a religion. Uh, the main character specifically is raised Catholic. Um, in the story, she's going to a Catholic high school. Her best friend also goes. Well, all of her friends in the story go to the Catholic school. She goes to church with these friends and then with her parents. This is the back cover and basically the story is she's had seven like mediocre slash bad kisses with the guys and then her eighth kiss is with the girl and it like changes her life. Let me read the synopsis for you guys. Mads is pretty happy with her life. She goes to church with her family and minor league baseball games with her dad. She goofs off with her best friend Kat and has thus far managed to avoid getting kissed by Adam, the boy next door. It's everything she hoped high school would be until all of a sudden it's not. Her dad is hiding something big, so big it could tear her family apart. And that's just the beginning of her problems. Mads is starting to figure out that the reason the reason she doesn't want to kiss Adam is because the only person she wants to kiss is Kat. Just like that, Mad's tidy little life. Excuse my popularity over there getting multiple text messages in this video. Although I probably would have edited out the other one. And that's sarcasm. I'm not I'm not super popular. That's sarcasm. I got jokes. I got jokes. Back to the synopsis. Just like that, Mad's tidy little life has gotten epically messy and epically heartbreaking. And when your heart is broken, it takes more than an awkward, uncomfortable, tooth-clashing, friendship-ending kiss to put things right again. It takes a whole bunch of them. What a synopsis. I would definitely recommend this. Though, in my opinion, it started off slow. You might not feel that way. Great message to like really great message in here to the point where you're gonna wanna like in the end 
I think there are some discussion points or there's like a Q&A with the author in the end and the artist and they just like talk about all the things that you're going to have on your mind after reading this story because it just has a lot to say and it's honestly a really great read. It's the kind of graphic novel that you wish the people in your life would read who aren't accepting of you. Like you wish they would read this story to get how it feels when the people closest to you who you love aren't accepting of you. Um, this is like the kind of book you'd want them to read. So you can get them this as a Christmas present. <laughs> okay, I have one more recommendation for you guys. My last recommendation is Snot Girl. Okay, where do I begin? I am a huge fan of Brian Lee O'Malley, the author of this comic. Because he created the comic behind one of my top three favorite movies of all time, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. I'm gonna support anything he does and I'm gonna read everything he releases. And so I'm a huge Brian Lee O'Malley fan. So I didn't go seeking this out because I thought it was queer. I sought it out because I'm a fan of Brian Lee O'Malley. I just wanna say I fell in love with this comic. I'm a huge, huge fan of Snot Girl. It is a comic about this girl. She's a fashion blogger in Los Angeles. She has bad allergies, so that's why it's called Snot Girl. This is not for everyone, because not everyone likes like these types of stories with this type of humor and these types of characters. She has a bunch of influencer friends and it's about like that influencer life. It's very like fashion centric. The artwork is adorable, um, but then there's this other aspect, almost like a murder mystery crime drama. like something else deeper is going on storyline. There are some very comedic moments in here. The characters are funny. The dialogue is witty. Um, I mean, Scott Pilgrim was funny and it was witty. This comic is for me, like 100,000%. Like This is the kind of story that I love to go for. As a comic in general, I recommend it. But this video is called LGBTQ plus comics. The thing about this comic is very early on in volume one, a character is introduced and you just get a gay vibe. Like you just get a vibe that that's gonna happen and that's where the relationship is going, but it's only ever hinted at. But it's hinted at very strongly. Like some things happen, some dreams happen, some interactions happen, and then in volume two it's hinted at even more. And then you see the cover of volume two. So you see what I'm saying? First of all, there are three volumes out, and I've only read the first two. I haven't even finished the second one. I have like five pages left of the second one. Huge things could happen in the storyline within the last five pages. Actually, most likely they will. But that's how this comic tends to end on a cliffhanger. I just wanted to bring this up in this video because it is a part of my comic collection and I don't, I'm not positive about where the storyline is headed or about the relationship between these two characters is headed. I need to finish the last five pages of volume two and then volume three came out um, like two months ago, a month or two ago and so I need to read that. Okay, let me read this not girl synopsis for you. Who is she? Lottie Person and I think it's pronounced person? Um, Lottie Person is a glamorous fashion blogger living her best life. At least that's what she wants you to think. The truth is, her allergies are out of control, her friends are terrible people, her boyfriend traded her up for someone younger, and she may or may not have killed somebody. It's the first volume of Snot Girl and things will never be the same. I do highly, highly recommend Snot Girl. Anyway, that brings this video to an end. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you check some of these comics out. If you live in Los Angeles, or even if you don't, I'm not sure if they have nationwide shipping, but please check out The Last Bookstore. They have a website. I'll put it here. I'll put it in the description. I really want to support them. I got Snot Girl from them, and I've got other things from them in the past. They're a great independent bookstore, and like a lot of independent bookstores, they are at risk of having to close. The last time I heard they were doing something really cool where you can go on their website and you can tell them a little bit about yourself and like the kind of things you like to read and then they will put together a bundle of books specialized just for you and it'll be a surprise. Um, I think you have the option to make it a surprise and I think the starting price for that was like $25 um, but doesn't that sound so cool? So anyway, please check them out. Guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video. Love my subscribers you guys are the freaking best thank you so much for hanging out thanks for watching this video i will see you again very soon until next time bye